think most people think the same way. Uh, our wildlife is facing problem of uh, poaching, actually. It's one of the reasons. And the second one is deforestation, as we all know, because what are part of our jungles are being replaced with palm oil, which is our government thinks that will help our country's economy. But I think the most important thing is these two things, like poaching, like poaching and also uh, deforestation. All right, uh, talking about strengths, uh, we have a lot. Weakness, we have more than what we have than strength. Okay, when I say that, because weakness, because we don't have really the, the right amount of awareness among us, I mean, the, the, the youngsters nowadays. So uh, one of the weaknesses is like, uh, the message that we're trying to convey to them doesn't reach their minds. Okay, they, they write about the thing, but it doesn't really go into their minds, so they don't really understand the need of, um, of, of wildlife conservation. So with these strengths, uh, with strengths that we're trying to put in the effort, they actually will help in wildlife management. Okay, in terms of wildlife management, we have a lot of zoos in Malaysia, and we also have an association, like Malaysian Association of Zoological Parks and Aquaria, that works really close with the uh, Department of Wildlife and this will help uh, the government to strengthen our way in terms of uh, managing the wildlife uh, in situ or ex situ. I mean, in, in the wild or in a zoo, the management will be different but I think the target is the same. So to me, uh, the, the strength that I, I wanted to say is because we have some institutions that works on wildlife management and works together with the government and with the law I think that will be good enough in terms of managing wildlife, but I mean we have to get the real people to do it. Right? It is very, very important, but not just to teach students, but our own children as well. So it starts at home. So anything that we do is now we have to educate the parents, and the parents give them first-hand education about wildlife at home and they have a secondary thing at school. So teachers and parents play a very important role to, to actually teach them to value wildlife. Without the value of wildlife, they don't know what's the importance of wildlife and they don't care about it. So to me, it starts at home. Secondary, it goes at school. And the third one is that it comes from our own self. If we like it and we know how to appreciate it, our wildlife will be protected. All right. most of there will be one animal or one species will be extinct. So, of course, we can protect them. The first thing is that we need to do is education or actually awareness among people. We have been talking about awareness since like maybe 20 years ago, but it doesn't really work as we all know that because the numbers are keep on, keep on declining. It doesn't work because the way we educate and we send awareness to our public is not really working. I mean, the target people is not really the elderly because the elderly they have certain way or level of thinking. So the main target to, to actually educate people is the school children or the young 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 kids actually, like you guys. Because, I mean, uh, we have a different way of thinking. Last time, I mean, the old folks, they have a different way of thinking. And we, in the new generation, we are more concerned about conservation. So, I mean, school, uh, schools and universities or even kindergartens have to have uh, some sort of a special method that actually highlights uh, the special thing and the most uh, the importance of wildlife. So uh, from there, we will produce generations that, that really thinks the importance of wildlife. So at, at the same time, they will inject something in their body, in their minds to actually help and protect the wildlife. So the main point here is education and also awareness. Awareness programs can be can be done in many ways and we know the best platform will be social media lah, because youngsters nowadays are always active in Instagram, Facebook and so on and so forth. So I think awareness must be going on. Not just saying that uh, like certain things that we, we see in television or in social media saying that keep on saying oh numbers are getting lower, animals have been declining, deforestation. That is not the sort of education that we need. We need is that okay certain species if they have been diminished in the, in the wild what will be affecting the world later on? Like bees, if bees have been uh, extinct in the wild, for sure we know we're going to be dead because they're actually the, the, the main agent to actually help plants to grow and we need plants for oxygen. Uh, this, this sort of thing, we have to educate them. Not just saying that the numbers are declining, what should we do? Uh, and also, not to say that's rubbish, but I think that one doesn't work because we know that, that been doing, we have been doing that for the past 20 years and it doesn't work. So we have to change. 
when we change, then we get something in their minds and they automatically will feel that there is a need to protect the wildlife. So what I can conclude in this Q&A session for today, um, there is no age limit between our, uh, there is no age limit in the, for the citizens of this globe uh, to care about the wildlife since the extinction of wildlife is, is here, it's no joke. So we need to uh, be aware about the number of the wildlife that are, in, that are um, decreasing over time. So if we don't take any actions, um, it's possible that the the wildlife in this world will become zero. So um, for the collaboration for today, uh, Zutaipe and UTP, we are here to encourage our audience um, all across the world to be care about the animals in this uh, in this world. Thank you for that, and also. I believe that will be the end for this session.